Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're going to expand our technique to a 3x3 three three system of linear equations. So we're looking for the variables x, y, and z. Now we have a fairly straightforward example because that way we can show you how that actually works. But again, the concept is that we have a matrix A which has all the coefficients of x, y, and z from the three equations. We have variable, we have matrix X which, which represents the three variables X, Y, and Z. And we have the matrix B which represents the constants of the right side of the equal sign. And of course, X, Y, and Z can be found by taking the inverse of matrix A and multiplying it by matrix B. So now we have to find the inverse of matrix A. So we take the matrix A right here and write into an augmented matrix where on the right side we have the what we call identity matrix with the ones across the diagonal, zeros everywhere else. We're now going to manipulate it, use the Gauss-Jordan method of elimination to turn the left side into the identity matrix so that the right side will then show us what the inverse of the matrix A is. All right, so first of all, we need a one in the corner here. So we're going to exchange row one and row two, uh, I should say row one and row three. So row one and row three are going to exchange positions so that I get this one to be up there. So the matrix will now look like this. So we have the 1, the negative 2, the 1, the 0, the 0, and the 1. The middle row will still be the same. And the bottom row will now be 2, negative 3, negative 4, 1, 0, and 0. All right, so now we have the 1 up here in the corner. We're now going to use that 1 to turn this into a 0. We can accomplish that by taking the third row and replacing it by the negative of this number times the row with the 1 in it and adding it to row 3. When we do that, we get the following matrix. So row 1 does not change. 1, negative 2, 1, 0, 0, 1. Row 2 doesn't change. 0, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 0. How about row 3? Well, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Added to 2, I get 0. Negative 2 times a negative 2 is a positive 4. Added to negative 3 is a positive 1. Negative 2 times, ne times a positive 1 is negative 2. Add to negative 4, I get negative 6. Here, nothing changes. Here, nothing changes. And here, negative 2 times 1 is a negative 2. All right, so now we have the first column taken care of. Now I need the second column. I need a 1 there, but I have a 0. But what I could do is I could switch row 2 and row 3 to put the 1 up here and the 0 down here. So I'm going to exchange row 2 for row 3. And when I do that, I get the following matrix. So row 1 stays the same. I get a 1, a negative 2, a 1, a 0, a 0, and a 1. So row 3 now becomes row 2. So I have a 0, a 1, a minus 6, a 1, a 0, and a negative 2. And row 3 becomes row, uh, row 2 becomes row 3, 0, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, and zero. All right, now I'm going to use this one right here to turn this into a zero. I can do that by taking the first row and replacing it by the negative of that number, which is a positive two, times the row with the one in it and adding it to row one. When I do that, I get the following matrix. So let's see here, row two doesn't change. So zero, one, negative six, one, zero, negative two. Row three doesn't change. Zero, zero, negative one, zero, one, zero. Row one now becomes a one. Two times one is two added to negative two is zero. Two times the negative six is negative 12 added to one is a negative 11. Two times one is two added to zero. I get a two, nothing changes there. And two times the negative two is a negative four added to one is a negative three. All right, so now I have the first two columns in the correct format. Now I need to change the third column. I need to change this to a positive one. So I take the third row and replace it by negative one times the third row. Simply change the signs of the third row to turn into a positive one. I then get the following matrix. So row one doesn't change. Row two doesn't change. And row 3, then I change all the signs, I get a 0, a 0, a positive 1, a 0, a negative 1, and 0. All right, now I'm going to use that 1 right here and turn this into a 0 and turn this into a 0. I can do that by taking the first row and replacing it by the negative of that number times the row with the 1 in it and adding it to row 1. I can take row 2 and replacing it by the negative of that number, positive 6, times the row with the 1 in it, adding it 
to row number two. That will turn these into zeros, and let's see how the other numbers then end up. So I get the following matrix when I do that. Now you can see that row three doesn't change, so I get a zero, a zero, and a one, a zero, a negative one, and a zero. Row one, 11 times one is 11, added to negative 11 is zero, so that becomes a zero. This remains a one and zero, this remains a zero and a one. Okay, 11 times zero, nothing changes. 11 times the negative one makes that a negative 11. 11 times zero, nothing changes. All right, row number two, six times one added to negative six is zero. Six times zero, nothing changes. Six times a negative one is a negative six. And six times zero, nothing changes. So now on the left side, I have the identity matrix. On the right side, I have the inverse of A. So this is the identity matrix. This is the inverse of A. Now, to find X, Y, and Z, I go ahead and do this. So I can say that the matrix containing X, Y, and Z is equal to the product of the inverse of the matrix A, which is A inverse right here, which is 2, negative 11, negative 3, 1, negative 6, negative 2, 0, negative 1, and 0. And I multiply that times the B matrix. The B matrix is 2, 5, 3. I get it right here. So 2, 5, and 3. So what is X, Y, and Z? Well, let's find out. So x is going to be this, this row multiplied times this column. So it will be 2 times 2 plus minus 11 times 5 and plus negative 3 times 3. Uh, barely have enough room there, but I could squeeze it in. All right. y is equal to this row multiplied times this column. So that would be a 1 times 2 plus a negative 6 times 5 plus a negative 2 times 3. And finally, it's this row times that column. So 0 times that, I get 0, minus 1 times 5, and plus 0. So simplifying that, I get the following. 4 minus 55, that's minus 51, and minus 9, that would be minus 60. That would be 2 minus 30, that's 28, minus 6, that would be minus 34, and here I get a minus 5. And here are the values for x, y, and z. x is equal to minus 60, y is equal to minus 34, and z is equal to minus 5. Coming up here, just to make sure here, I have a minus z equals 5, and z equals minus 5, so that checks out. Maybe another quick check, minus 60 plus 68. That would be plus 8, minus 5, plus 3. So it looks like the answer seemed to make sense. And that must be the answer then for x, y, and z. Again, the way we do that is we get the three equations. We find the A matrix, which consists of the coefficients of x, y, and z in the equations. The x matrix represents the variables x, y, and z that we're looking for. The B matrix represents the constants of the right of the equal signs. Then we need to find the inverse of the matrix A because x, y, and z will be equal to the inverse of A times the matrix B. We use the Gauss-Jordan method of elimination where the augmented portion is the, the identity matrix. So we take the A matrix, augment with the identity matrix. We use the Gauss-Jordan method of elimination to, do, to turn the left side into the identity matrix so that the right side then becomes the inverse of the matrix. We then take the inverse of the matrix, multiply times the B matrix to find X, Y, and Z. And that's how we use this technique to solve a system of linear equations. And that's how it's done.